Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Euro Truck Simulator 2 VR video. But as you can see, no, it's not because I'm a rock star. All the TV crews around here wanting to do interviews and all the groupies. Uh, well, the female ones are in the back of the trailer. Do you know what? I'll tell you what. Gold dust them. Bloody toilet rolls. I'll tell you, I'll be selling that for a fiver later. I've also got me thank iPad there for, well, personal entertainment later in the cab. But ladies and gentlemen, joking aside, you can see there is a TV crew over there. And you may be wondering, well, why? What's, what's, the, what's going on here, demon? Well, I'm about to show you. Yes, we are taking an oversized massive in brackets, a massive boat here, and we're going to be taking this north up here, in, near Oslo actually, and we're going to be transferring this down towards the harbour where another trailer will take it onto the boat to be shipped abroad. So that's what we're going to be doing. This is oversized, and it's not quite as simple as a normal delivery. As this is an oversized haul, you will see that there will be two transport vehicles, much akin to the one at the front you can see in yellow there. That vehicle will be one at the front and there will be one at the back. And they will transport us and make sure that the road is clear out ahead as we come into the town and out onto the motorway. If we decide that we're going to be changing lane, it will be the rear vehicle will move over to the left. He will transport or communicate with the front vehicle who will then move over left and that's my time to move over. I don't move until those vehicles have moved lane. So that's really what's going to be happening today. We're going to be get, getting a private escort, Ooh, went with the first time, a private escort here down on our journey and the police will be blocking off the majority of the roads as we get further in and we should see film crews, TV companies and contractors on the way up all wanting to get a glimpse. So let's get out of here. Hey up lads and let the TV crews get their footage of this and let's get out onto the road and hopefully this will all go swimmingly. So as you can see, the traffic has all been stopped here and there are quite a few bikes around today. There is a bike festival on, I think, here in Oslo and I think that's probably why I've seen quite a lot out on the road. So here's our first turn here. Quite a sharp road in order to, to get that trail around at the back there. And this is an extremely tight fit. That's what Kate says to me. I'll leave it. <laughs> oh dear, I knew it was too good to be true. So it looks like we've already damaged the trailer. Who put that flipping pile on there on the left? All right, let's get the, get the cab as far over on this barrier as I can. Oh, we're in a world of pain here now, lads. I think I'm going to need that toilet roll in a minute. Now, when I back up, that horrendous sound you're going to hear is the rear vehicle telling me that there is a collision uh, about to happen should we continue. So... Ah dear, we're in a world of pain now, just relax, let's just have a look at you, what's going on? So we're clear on this side, it's definitely something catching on that silver, whatever it is. It's not a light, is it? It's probably a speed camera, some knobhead from the council's put that there, expecting a bit of moolah. They're always after your money, aren't they? Anytime you make any, there's always bloody hands sticking out and grabbing it all. Right. Let's just think about this logically, let's not stress out about this. Right, so we are stuck at the rear, which means we're going to have to reverse. But what I can't tell here is, because I haven't got a CB radio, I can't tell that rear vehicle to ask how much room there is between us and him. Let's just see if we can get this out, because this is going to be a disaster if we've damaged the bloody boat already.
Never mind beeping on the bloody radio, squilching. Ah, oh, lads. What an absolute disaster. Well, the boss brought me in for review, um, and they actually took the uh, half of the damages, which was six grand, out of my wage packet. So, you know, six months later, there is another boat going to the same place, and the management have said, you know, they'll give me another chance, but if I mess this second boat up, then uh, they will be having to make me, yeah. Well, there was talk of redundancy, but uh, I think they basically said that they would sack me. So the pressure's on for the rest of this drive here today. I don't want to go back six months ago and have that disaster as we did at that top road. The actual pylon was removed uh, by the police and the council on this second run. So there was no... <laughs> what are you talking about? So there's no opportunity for the boat or the trailer <laughs> getting carried away. I'm getting immersed. <laughs> Ah, oh, dearie me. The power of virtual reality. So anyway, give us a mint. Freshen my breath up a little bit. So, as you can see, we've made it through that little section up there. And we're now out on the road on our way north here. And we will have a restricted speed limit on the way up as we pass this industrial side. As we head out of the city towards the agricultural side. I still can't believe it. We have going to have to watch out for the bikers, as I mentioned this time every year there is a bike festival here in the city so they will be whizzing around but there are a lot of cops around on each one of the flyovers and the dual carriageway entranceways so the chances are that they're not going to be blasting up and down and if they do well they'll only get squashed So as we cross the bridge, we're about a mile now from Alberg, and if this journey, which is tending, we really are going to be sticking to the motorways, um, what I'll do is I'll probably cut this journey short here as I'm recording this with a GoPro on my chest so that you guys can get the actual view from the cabin here, and I will cut some of it out. I know a lot of you are really interested in the actual journey, but a lot of you out there just want to see the interesting sights and smells and things that we can see out on the road, and as you can see, there's a couple of bikers and I shall tell you about an interesting story about being a biker and one of my accidents and one of those X-File moments which is really kind of spooky a little bit further into this video so it looks like we're coming off the motorway here and I can really feel the weight of that boat pushing us down this hill even though we've got the full retarder on it's really pushing the vehicle down and my braking distances are massive you can see the police there not sure you should be really quite out there. I think you would have been better parked on the actual road stopping the traffic as we come down here. And from here we're going to be heading a little bit further out now into the rural area as we then we push over down into the valley. We will be heading back down into the port. You can see the massive wind turbines over here on the right. Reminds me a lot of these. They're at a place up near Harrogate called Penny Pot Lane, which is incidentally near Menworth Hill, the American spy base. You can see there's a TV crew up there doing a report on us. And Penny Pot Lane is just one long straight road. It goes past the army recruitment barracks. And um, it's where the bikers go, shall we say, to, uh, well, only do very slightly over the speed limit. <laughs> because there's no way that the police can hide anywhere on that road and you can uh, quite enjoy yourself. I'll say no more about that. But incidentally, I shall tell you about the story about me being a biker. I had a fire blade. And um, I was following my mum's partner, Steve, who was a biker for 30, 40 years. Knows the roads like the back of his hands. And when I was... I'd been riding for about a year or so and I got a little bit cocky and what happened used to happen was we'd go for a ride, he would follow me and then he'd come up against the side of me, give me the nod as if to say I'm off for a blast, I'll see you down the road well on this day he, he flew off I can't remember what bike he was he may, he may have had his R1 back then and um, as I tried to keep up I didn't know the roads and uh, as I went over a little humpback bridge there was an immediate right hand turn, call those bikers didn't see it coming so I had to slam the brakes on 
and I could feel I was losing traction and I actually went over the top of the handlebars and the first thing that you do is you put your hands out which is the worst thing you can do as a biker you're supposed to almost curl up and protect yourself and um, everything went into slow motion I remember skidding down the road somehow the bike was behind me I saw it spinning and it flipped up into the air and uh, it was genuinely one of those moments where I thought I'm dead if that bike lands on top of me those wheels are still spinning like I don't know 500 times a bloody minute or something ridiculous I was doing a little bit over the speed limit shall we say <laughs> and um, it went straight through a farmer's wall literally straight through and as I, I skidded down the road over the cat's eyes um, I had a one piece set of leathers on by the way I eventually stopped in the middle of the road and I thought well I'm not dead but my hands were hurting like somebody hit them with a baseball bat horrendous pain so I sat up in the middle of the road thinking, right, well, I don't think my back's broken. I don't think my legs are broken. And a car, because at this point I was on the wrong side of the road, a car came around the corner and stopped right in front of me. Two people got out and rushed straight over to me and uh, said, was I all right? Do I need an ambulance? Blah, 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 blah. And um, I said to them, my hands are hurting. And the guy said to me, there was a man and a woman, he said, what do we do? don't take your helmet off and do not take your gloves off because if you've smashed your hands up the gloves are holding your hands together and I said how do you know all this and he said I'm a hand surgeon <laughs> believe it or not <laughs> a hand surgeon and the um, woman that was there the female she was a nurse in the hand theatre down at Jimmy's um, just incredible X-Files factor um but anyway, so they called an ambulance. I was rushed straight down to hospital because I'd smashed the bones in my thumb. They were all shattered. And uh, there was a worry that the, the fragments would cut through the veins and I would bleed to death. So I was in theatre within... I think the ambulance took about 10, 15 minutes to get down into Leeds on full blues. I was in theatre almost straight away. And can you believe it? The surgeon who came to see me before I went in was the guy who was in the road when I'd come off my bike. Now that is, and that's a spooky X-Files moment, I think you've got to agree. Um, I did make a full recovery, I had my hand pinned, and uh, unbelievable that the farmer tried to sue me for damaging his wall, um, and in court he said that he'd, he was stood at the top of the field and he saw me come off the bike and his sheep got out and uh, he wanted to sue me but uh, my counter solicitor said well if you were at the top of the field and you saw him come off his bike why did you not go down and try and rescue him you just walked off uh, and it was left out court it was it, nothing happened basically he'd got himself into trouble for leaving me half dead in the road but anyway that's a, a long boring story I apologise a bit uh, I thought it was interesting because there's a lot of bikers out here on the road today. But let's continue on with our mother trucking journey. amazes me that so many people are enticed into buying all the DLCs when you know even just covering the entire of the UK is quite a mammoth task to undertake and when you've got basically the entire genre and area of Europe you never really are going to see the same things twice and how the developers create these these maps and locations is quite mind-blowing because some of the areas have landmarks in them and people say they can recognize certain parts of each city 
obviously not all the roads are true to length let's just check the boat and everything so we've got the vehicle behind us the uh, escort vehicle and I am in the middle of the road here so that we can turn right we haven't got very far to go now as we come down we will be heading down towards the harbour as you can see the old popo there and you may notice as well that as a escort vehicle uh, transporting something this size uh, the road traffic signals don't apply, such as traffic lights. Uh, they literally don't stop once this vehicle that we're in sets off and gets going. We're not really supposed to stop to keep the momentum going. So as we get down on the harbour here, you can see some of the warehouse in the dust. Warehouse workers down here in the industrial unit side, down near the harbour. They'll be coming out and having a little nosy about what's going on here. Over on the left, we've got a couple of bikers stopped. So we should be heading just down here, round this corner. And that should lead us down to the harbour where another trailer will be taking this onto the ferry to go abroad. Smell that sea air. Oh, I fancy some fish and chips now and a bag of cockles. What about you lot? Oh, smell that. Beautiful. So here we are as I <laughs> be at the last corner. The uh, patrol vehicles, the escort vehicles, they will be moving off to the left now. They won't be behind us. And as you can see, the engineers are over already on the left. Can't speak, it's been a long day today. And we're going to be leaving this vehicle here on the road. And the engineers will be out checking the actual vehicle and the trailer and making sure that everything's all right. And once we drop this off, another vehicle will be taking it out to the ferry that you can see out in the distance. And I will be dropping off at Premier Inn. I'm not sleeping in the cab tonight. I fancy a good night's sleep. Uh, probably have a few whiskies, a few sherbets, you know, a bit of company, you know what I'm saying? And uh, then I shall be heading off back up into Europe for another pickup. So if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see some more... Oh, making me ass is killing me. Uh, give us a like, show me some love, subscribe, share and all that good stuff and I shall no doubt be doing some more virtual reality Euro Truck Simulator 2 videos. I'm just really enjoying them, I find them very very relaxing to do and it seems that quite a few of out there are enjoying them as well. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in another video coming real soon. Bye bye. What's he waving at, fool? <laughs>